It's three day races. The guests of the Royal Foy Yacht Club. I was in the room using their Wi Fi. So it doesn't it sound much more yeah. British than the Royal Western Yacht Club, which is where you'll find an Englishman named Richard Lett wearing a twins cap. And it certainly doesn't get any more British than the royal family. Richard Letts spent a lot of time with them too. So fancy finding a seafaring sailor like him. So I'm just trying to get anti-fouling on this today. And Puttering about on an old houseboat on the still frozen waters of the St. Croix. I can get these on and get these all greased up, peeling these back. A testament to the power of love and of chance encounters. I've been in the uh, Scotland Yard Metropolitan Police in London for 32 years. When Richard Lett tells his story, thinking this is just amazing, it's which he did several times in the Twin Cities last month. I was doing, I'd um, done some diving with with with, with William, and, and this is part of his uh, Prince William. He baits death. the hook, so to speak, with royal reminiscing. He spent 15 years in charge of protecting the royal family, staying close especially to the boys as they grew up. They got on and lived lives of pretty ordinary teenagers and actually gained a huge amount of respect from me for, for that, the confidence. As naughty as they were on occasions, I think it was fantastic. To have and to hold from this day forward. He was invited to the royal wedding. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. They're the real deal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But According declined. He ran security for it instead. There he is, watching over the bride and her sister. But his real message when he speaks... But I'd always been involved in projects like this. It's really important that you volunteer. So in his case, like for some space. reason, volunteering... There's a little lock nut inside. ...and adventure seem to go hand in hand. Like the time he was teaching diving to kids in the Caribbean and ended up spotting not one, but three men lost at sea and the time he raced in honor of a children's hospice. Every time I've done a significant race, I've renamed the boat after the charity that I do. Later this month, he'll race across the Atlantic by himself, an event called the O-Star. It begins in Great Britain and ends in Newport, Rhode Island. So I'm starting in Plymouth. Fewer people have done that than have climbed K2. The further north one goes, the smaller the world is, so you reduce your course. But the further north, the more ice, as in icebergs. So around this point, I have to see how fit I am, what the iceberg situation is, and see whether I'm going to go high or low. 25 days at sea, 21 if all goes well. No crew, no sleep. My intention is that I will sleep or close my eyes for 20 minutes every hour. Day and night. If he gets in trouble, the nearest boat, two to 300 miles away. You know, the sea temperature's four to six degrees there. You know, I, I, think it's, I think it's ever so important that I stay on the boat. I think if I, if I don't stay on the boat, I, don't, I think then, then time is really critical. The boat, now named Pathways to Children. Pathways to Children raises money in Minnesota that funds orphanages and schools in India and also in Africa. Margaret LeClaire, who owns a Woodbury health insurance brokerage company, is a director of Pathways. The organization also takes students to India, life-changing trips that create world citizens. Richard Lett knew nothing about this Minnesota charity when he traveled with Prince Michael of Kent to Mumbai, India in 2010. The prince was consoling the families of victims of the terrorist bombing there. Richard was on his protection detail. So my mind was on anything other than on love, I suppose. Margaret Leclerc was in Mumbai, too, on her way home from a Pathways trip to India. They crossed paths at a Mumbai hotel. They shared a couple of hours and shared their stories, but didn't see each other for two years. But Richard was taken with Margaret's volunteer work and with something else. This is Richard's. Yep. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah, that'll look perfect. Looks good? Yeah, that'll look really nice. So when did you realize you loved him? Um, in some sense, the first day. Yeah. And 
Uh, but, but you think, you know, can this really be true? They'd emailed for two years, but never even talked on the phone. Maybe it's equivalent to 100 years ago writing letters, but at least there's that instant gratification in delivery. Back in London, things were getting interesting. There were the Olympics, Richard did security for those, and the Queen's Jubilee. He worked that detail too. And of course, there would be another royal child to protect. So do you know if Kate's having a boy or a girl? Do you know, I don't know. I mean, we're all very excited to know. I or actually are you really just not saying? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> But when Richard came to Minnesota to see Margaret two years after their chance encounter, of course it was true. He decided to leave service to the royal family to start his own. I had to clear my decks in order to be to, to, to be with Margaret. They will marry at an old English estate on May 19th. One week later, Richard begins his transatlantic race from Plymouth. See any yeah. Which is why. He flew to Great Britain several weeks ahead of her. He's sailing as much as he can now, practicing, hoping anything that will break on his boat does now, not mid-Atlantic. His autopilot gave out a couple of days ago. Already, people are noticing and asking about pathways to children. We got into a long conversation. Uh-huh. Uh, you know sending kids off to uh, India to get life experience, which is what she found to be the best part of it, you know? Right. Well, that's great. She's got confidence in his resourcefulness, admires his determination, but no one will be happier to see him sail into the American harbor. I love you very much. Okay. And, uh, I love you, too. Have a nice weekend, you guys. I have a wonderful sail tomorrow. The best wedding present in the world will be to see him arrive in Newport. Okay, bye-bye. Love you. Love you too. Bye-bye. We've set up a link to the OSTAR website and to Richard's Facebook page so you can follow his progress in the transatlantic race. You may also want to follow a woman named Cass Schmidt. She wants to be the first American woman ever to finish the race. She learned to sail on Lake Mendota at UW-Madison. I'm Trish Van Pilsom for Fox 9 News.